Michiko. Um, hey. This is uh, brass trumpet or trumpets in, in, in period. It's going to be in three parts. The first phase is just going to be some history. And I have to warn those of you that probably know more about music than me, than me that are reading through my stuff. I wrote that 25 years ago and I couldn't find the original file, so I copied it. So I'll mention a couple things as we go. Um, it, by and large, I'm, I'm happy with the document. Of course, if I wrote it again, I'd revise a few things. All right, so we're going to break this class into three parts. The first part's going to be some history because I don't think it's just genteel to jump straight into making trumpets. Let's talk a little bit about, trump about trumpets first. Um, and then the section, section, second section, we will actually make a PVC trumpet like the one over here. And I've got enough kits for three people to make. And if you're interested in taking the finished product home, it was 10 bucks a part, so I'd ask 10 bucks. There you go. So yeah, so this, th we'll be making one of these. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Um, and we'll be talking about a bunch of things. So what I'll have to do is jump back and forth between the presentation and this quite a bit because we have to show off all the all the instruments. It's a it's a okay. lot. It worked. Then it works. All right. So this is a, a picture from Pretoria Sigmata Music Cattle from 1619 or so, um, showing the state of brass instruments of the day. So um, we'll talk about most of these. So way before our period, there were horns, the, the Romans had horns, but even before then, I, I like the, 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 the carinx. Has anybody ever seen this? Or There's a video of a guy playing and it sounds so awesome. But these were cast out of bronze. Both this and the lure um, were uh, cast out of bronze, which kind of limited a bunch you could do with it. Um, but I understand people played a range of notes, especially on the carinx. Now, I don't... It's, I, I hear people doing this and they say, oh yeah, this happened. I don't have hard documentation. I wish I had hard documentation. But I suspect people did that. Um, the, the Romans had several types of horns. And then this one in the middle here wasn't, wasn't from the others. I patched that into that picture. But that was actually a, a silver trumpet from the tomb of Tutankhamun. So Ooh. trumpets are ancient. People figured this out a while ago. And, and I'm going to take a quick break here. If you look at that one in the middle and the great big long one on the side there, they both kind of have some of the same idea. They're largely largely cylindrical, and then toward the end they flare out. Um, and the, the instruments in the trumpet family are that way. So trumpets, trombones, um, not tubas, not French horns, not cornets, uh, are cylindrical until they flare. So. Uh, when I'm talking about trumpets, I'll use that. That's what I mean. And then everything else, like this beautiful horn here, is not a trumpet. It is a horn. And the horn is conical, right? It gets bigger, 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 bigger. Um, this guy, this cornetto, which I'll show you later, is bigger, bigger, bigger. Uh, doesn't get that big, though. Tubas, bigger, 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 right? All right, I get all excited. It's a cut uh, character flaw. So the Romans had a couple horns, in particular, the, um, the tuba was uh, relatively famous. It's not that tuba, though. It wasn't a bass instrument. Um, I'm going to switch here on the screen for a second. So I'm going to unshare. There we go. So the tuba would look like a lot like what we think of as a herald trumpet nowadays. It probably had a bigger bore than this, but it was probably about this long. And it would play in the key more or less of a modern bugle. You'd have a limited number of notes you could play on it like a modern bugle. And eventually I'll, I'll end up playing this guy. And for those that missed it, this was the cornetto that was conical. It's that it gets bigger, 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 even though it never gets that big. More on that guy later. Um, and then the cool one that the Romans had, and here's another one where I wish I had more documentation, and it's out there somewhere, and somebody's done the research, but I haven't, um, is the cornet. Come on, screen, share. So if you look at my document here, it's that big curvy guy. This guy had about as much length of tubing as a trombone, which is about as much length of tubing as the natural trumpet we're going to make him play. So this guy had the same kind of musical range, if you will, as what we're going to work with. What I don't know, don't worry about it because I'll be back there 10 times. Uh, what I don't know is, do these had, um, were they played melodically the way that the natural trumpets were eventually by the Baroque? 
Uh, that I don't know. Um, but they totally could have been, right? And I imagine they had professional musicians playing them, so I, I, I bet some of that happened. How much? I don't know. Somebody does. Um, now, some of these horns carry forth. Um, in my document, I don't make a big deal out of it, but uh, from other research I've done since and read from other people, um, in Western Europe, kind of trumpets disappear for a while. The Roman Empire fell and, and just people stopped making them. And then at, uh, when the Crusades came, people went out and it's like, oh, those things are really cool. And they brought back those and all sorts of things like shams and all, all the cool things. Um, so the, the Romans left us this rich heritage. Um, and in the Dark Ages, okay, if, if they had them, they were copies of what the Romans did. If they, you know, um, and, and one of the things like you saw back on the Roman one, this guy here, the tall, the long, long, long guy, um, that would be eight, nine, ten feet long, depending on what pitch they wanted. Um, that's very unwieldy, very unwieldy. And this became a thing um, in in the, the 12th, 13th centuries. You had these super long trumpets. Um, Nope, wrong way. And what eventually folks figured out how to do, I get all excited about like making the brass and oh, my, my, my favorite one, I, I can't help myself. My favorite one here is that the, they didn't quite know about the chemistry. So the, the, there's a, a statement that says uh, the, the, the brass uh, undergoes an increase in its weight. So we take, we take the copper and we mix it with um, the, oh, let me get the word right. I always mess this up. Yeah, yeah, but there's zinc in it, the calamine, and then it increases in weight. Well, there's zinc in the calamine and the alloys with the, the, the copper to make brass, right? But, but e even in the, our period, they, they, you know, they, they weren't quite sure. You know, so this quote I have here, uh, further, the brass undergrows an increase in weight when it is made, when you put... Uh, when you put into the pots 46 pounds of calamine and 64 pounds of copper, the weight of the brass is increased by 20 pounds, so you always get 90 pounds uh, produced. That's clearly we're not quite sure what's happening there. It is it is truly magic, um, which which is kind of cool. It's kind of fun. Um, but one of the big things was how do I bend this thing? Because they would they would take sheet brass, they would cut it, they would wrap it around a mandrel. I can't imagine the detail to get that right because I'm such a ham-fisted creator or anything that to try to get a, a tube like that to match, oh, I'd just be screaming for death. But then they would um, they would put a paste solder on it. They'd pull the mandrel out. They'd set it in coals hotter than, than uh, needed so it would set the solder, right? So you would imagine that that's not a perfect solder joint. It's going to have trouble here and there. And then to try to bend that, it would just crease up. Like you ever try to take a straw and bend a straw, mm -hmm. it's just not happening. So um, they eventually figured out if they filled it with lead and made a little radius jig, do, 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 they can just gently hammer it and tinker out the little folds. And, and they, they, ah, we can totally make bends. So we started to see the trumpet get shorter. And then now, now it's a little more popular. It doesn't need you know, an entire, uh, you know, minivan to stick, to stick that in. Does anybody try to put something really long in their minivan? I made a trebuchet and mm -hmm. the arm was 13 feet long because that's how long I could fit in my Volkswagen bus and still close the door. <laughs> and I would carry 500 pounds of rocks. It was more fun than adults should be allowed to have. <laughs> but, um, but if I could fold up the trebuchet, it would have been easier to make a longer arm. And so the, the trumpets, you know, became that way. So, so, my natural trumpet that I showed before here, I'll, I'll stop sharing again for a second. Um, this guy is roughly nine feet of tubing. You know, so instead of having it, you know, nine feet all in one shot, I get it in this cute little package. Now, before I uh, get too excited here, quick show of hands, who has played trumpets before? Okay, couple, no, no. What about my audience online? Are, are we trumpet players or just trumpet curious? Yeah, one person raising their hand. Okay. And another person with a thumbs up. Let me see. Play. Play a little bit more specific. Well, like if you've tinkered a few notes. Yeah. You oh, can go, oh, yeah. you can go ba, ba, and perhaps ba. Ba, 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 okay, that's, okay. 
So, <laughs> well, well, okay, that's it. All right. So there's a difference between that and ba, ba, and perhaps ba, right? Um, because that's kind of the way the trumpet works. Um, like if I take this long trumpet, I don't think we need a visual. <laughs> So I get notes, but I don't get all the notes in between. Um, but notice as I get a little higher, the notes get a little closer together. At the beginning, it's just... And then... Okay. Um, but um, when I double the tubing length, which is what the natural trumpet does... I get to that point where the notes are closer together without ruining my lips. And then I eventually get to the point where I can play a scale. Um, now, they figured this out for real in the Baroque. And you hear all those beautiful Baroque trumpet players. Um, they didn't quite go so far in, in, in our period, but I'll, we'll, we'll uh, explore the depths of that. Let's see, where can we put this for a moment? But I, put, I made that out of pieces, parts, probably in 1992. And I made this about the same time. This is my natural trumpet slash slide trumpet. <laughs> Visual on that later. I invited myself to Mistress Johanna's group and sat down and started playing bass lines on that and eventually was able to play alto and tenor on it. Okay, so anyway, we got folded, we got folded trumpets. We're, we're moving now, right? Um, come on. There we go. Oh, there's the trip hammers making the brass. So cornettos are a little bit of a side path. They're, we nominally consider them brass because of their mouthpiece. Here's a visual for folks if people didn't get a good look at it before. Um, I always joke that the cornetto is the evil love child between a trumpet and a recorder. So it's got a teeny tiny trumpet mouthpiece and fingers like a recorder. And... Yeah, sounds like a mix kind of in there between. So these sounded like a brass and could kind of do some of the things trumpets did without being quite so brash. They could play loud or soft. They could, oh, I don't want to leave. What am I doing? Um, they could play chromatically more or less, which is which was a big deal. They were wildly popular in the Renaissance and into the early Baroque. Um, I've heard people say they were the predominant wind instrument. I, I don't know how well that's corroborated, but I've seen that written a bunch. And having it be my favorite instrument, well, I totally am on board with that. Um, now, the, the Cornetto family kind of started eh, out of animal horns. People would blow animal horns, and then they figured, oh, I'll put a hole in it. Oh, I can get a couple notes. And then by the 14th century, things looking just like that were, were out. Um, so but. What I decided to do, because I'm a brass guy, and there wasn't anybody playing brass anything when I got into the SCA. I'm sure there were, but they weren't around me, is I made this guy out of pieces and parts. Um, so it's got a, it's got trombone stockings and, a, and, a, and a, one slide from the trombone and a trumpet bell. But this functions both decently well as a natural trumpet substitute, um, and I can play a few notes on it. So wait, where my mouthpiece go that I have? So now this guy you're going to see not only can I play the notes I did on the other one. Watch. Let's put one. But yeah, let's swap five and ones. Go ahead and okay. turn that out. Turn this out. So now, where was two? Here's two. So one goes here. All right. Which is five. Oh, it's five. Oh, it's five. All right. So now notice that. Mm. That's not exactly where we are. It'll be all right. So now we're going to take five. Goes there. Yep. And now that should stick out a little longer. And then we're going to take this adapter off. It goes on to one. And then notice that's a little further out. Okay. Yeah. So now. Pop that on of there and tape it, tape it pretty good once we get the tape back. Yep, and if you look at it from the inside, you yeah. want that. Yeah. And so what I did is I put just a couple little like two inch pieces, one, two, three, four of them, and then I wrapped around starting on the front of it. It's okay. never going to be super sturdy. Right. 
Right. So when you can use that other tape or you can wait for a... I'll use the tape that's here. It's going to dispenser and cutter on it and everything. All right. Well, how much... How much? I would make, do we I have made like two little two inch strips. To I made four of them. To, to how much white should I see on this side? Um, see, this is a little too much. See how it's sticking like a half a quarter inch in. If okay. you want it flush, so while people are taping up their horns, may I play this? Sure. Now that's a cornet mouth. <laughs> it, it didn't come with a mouthpiece. That was the one I picked up. Can I use that? Yeah. Okay. Probably works better with a horn mouth piece. Now this, and he's like, yeah, look at that. <laughs> One of the things in period horns is you'd have you'd have a tuning crook. So for those of you who are watching me here, this is what we doing this time? Maybe horn. It's a horn because it's conical, bigger, 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 bigger. But this comes with a tuning slide. Uh, horns would have come with crooks or bits to change their their key. Um, this gets you at least in the neighborhood, right? So now this is going to sound different. It sounds like a French horn if you've heard it play. It's probably the same length of tuning. You should be able to play a really low, low note on this. This mouthpiece isn't good for that. So it's so long. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you hear a difference with the phone? You can just test So now for the fun part. Uh, go ahead and play what you think is its kind of base note that you can play there. And we'll see what key we're in. So play the other, the, the last one you did, though. Good day, that's going to be close to C. So play I have no play. idea what I'm doing with other so You're going to go. <laughs> okay, and just. We'll put, fix it up. Yeah, it'll do something. A little, little lower if you can. Loosen up. Okay, and then the last note you had, just a little more forcefully. Oh, and then you had that nice ah uh, before. Okay. <laughs> and, and again, it's not your thing, right? It's, it's, you. it's not something I've done before now. So if we were interested in doing this. Yeah, that's that, that's one of the things I was hoping that somebody played enough trumpet to. So so yeah. Master Robion's like, oh, I'm not used to being able to go ba 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 on a trumpet because my my transmission funnel behind you was cracked, and and so it was no end of of of, of amusement. So <laughs> so now if if I play a note, let's see, where's my washer? And if you want to try a different mouthpiece, feel free. But that that one's that one's the best one to get any note out of, and that one's a nice middle middle one. Yeah. Oh, oh, that'd be a lot like a trombone mouthpiece. Matter of fact, it looks to me like a trombone mouthpiece. So you'll you'll find you'll get stronger in the lower fundamentals, and 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 you'll have trouble playing really high notes. Okay, so what do I do? I'm missing a mouthpiece. That's okay. This one will work. <laughs> All right. So we've, we've made a trumpet in 20 minutes. Look at us go. Of course, the parts were cut, cut out for us. So we cheated a little bit. No, no, don't leave. I'm going to share my screen and...
trying to leave. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again. There we go. So once again, for those of you on Zoom, um, I've got a list of, in, uh, of uh, parts you need. I've got assembly instructions. I gave you a link to a guy that talks you through it. Um, if you wanted to do this at home, you could totally do it. There, this isn't rocket science. Um, the hardest part is taping the funnel on. Um, it's getting the right size. I mean, the right. The right, length of two right, right. So somebody getting you in the ballpark started, boom, off you go. So now when I go here, it's 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I was really, really interested in tuning this, I'd get a tuner. Um, and, and, and if we're feeling saucy, we, we might between me and, and Roby on here because we're about a half pitch off. And if we wanted to play something together, we'd want to get a little closer. Um, but in this case, you'd play your note, right? And then, like, where, where is it? When you go, it says, oh, Yeah. Have you ever heard tubas tuning and you get or five contrabass bugles and they're just off and it sounds like a squadron of, of fighters? <laughs> so we'll get a little of that, but but we could totally play this. This would be awesome. Um, and and again with this, if you cut too much off, um, There's some joints that could be used as extenders. Yep, yeah, they, they totally sell um, a coupler. I'm brandishing a coupler. Just go to Home Depot and look for half-inch PVC coupler. You know, And you just put two pieces in there, and look, it's almost as good as a pipe stretcher. Now, what we didn't do is we didn't glue any of this. The friction fit is plenty good for, for this. Um, um, then I, I can, if people don't take these, I can bust them down and use them when I teach this class again. Um, so the question is, we, we made these horns. Woo, look at us go. What can we do with them? So, so um, if you look at my little diagram up there, you can see these. Uh, there's a, two things, one and two there, and or zero and one. And you've got a wave going between them. That would be the fundamental note, the lowest note we could play, which we can't really play on this one. Here I get the, the, the note we were tuning to. That's note four on this picture. We can play note three, but it's flat. And and a skilled player with the right mouth key piece can play number two. You might be able to get two with that big mouth piece there. Um, and then, uh, in general, a trumpet won't be able to get that bottom fundamental. Now, a trombone... Being a little more geared for that with the proper mouthpiece and the proper bell size and all of that, I can get that pedal, we call it a pedal tone in the trombone world. So with the trombone, um, I'm going to be a, a note lower because this is a B flat uh, closed note, but that's the note we were tuning to. Those are the, the next two minutes. You can get that pedal tone. The trumpet isn't going to get that. Now, what's kind of fun is if you've got an instrument with a closed end, um, it basically doubles the effective length. So, so I made this racket this summer. It doesn't really make a racket. It's actually fairly soft compared to everything else I own. Um, I'm going to stop. So, so this is a racket. It has nine holes drilled through it. And then you can see that I've, I've, I've patched it up. So this hole goes to the center, it goes down to the bottom, it loops around, it comes up here, it comes back down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's got nine passages. So this has about as much length of tubing as our trumpet or as a trombone. Um, but even without the fact that I don't have enough fingers to press all these holes, Well, I've got a couple of those, but I just, I've got a bunch more that, you know, I, I didn't buy the, the kit. Mm -hmm. This plays much lower, right? So that's that that's that doubling uh, effect of the closed, closed board. And this thing just makes me chuckle, though. Mm. 
after that. <laughs> so I think we have trouble with the trio of those. <laughs> <laughs> I have a trio. I played play trios with them. They're great fun. <laughs> they are. You just don't expect something that deep out of something so wee. People call the tenor when they call it a pocket bassoon. Okay. Because it's it is wee and it sounds like a bassoon. That sounds like a sub contra bassoon, <laughs> right? It's, um, they play nice with crumb horns, I don't know. Okay, well, yeah. Anything that's not so loud it doesn't blow them away because they're quiet enough. You could probably play them with recorders, and that the recorder the recorder players would hate you less than they hate me when I play cornetto. <laughs> Um, I've done most before using yeah. recorders. All right, so back to sharing my screen. What notes can we play and what notes should we play? Um, <laughs> so again, we're we're on this harmonic series. There's the physical representation of it in the upper right corner, but the uh, musical notation of it at the bottom. And what you'll notice is at the very beginning in bass clef, that really no, low note I played on the trombone, boom, it's that one way down there. Um, and then the second note is a full octave. Um, and then between three and four, I get I get the G in the middle. Um, bum, bum. And then from the next one, I get C, E, G, you know, bum, 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 bum. That's actually one in the middle there. People don't play it as often as that D flat. You can you can play that. And then once I get to the eighth, now I can play a scale in C. Ba -da 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 -da. Uh, more or less in some type of uh, I don't what was do you know the name of the temperament of that? If I just play those harmonics even without any I wanted to say it's just, but I don't know. I know it's not, it's we're used to going to a piano. And every half step is exactly the same, right? And, and, and in period, eh, we weren't there yet. Uh, and there's pluses and minuses, uh, but this would be just intonation where it's pure physics. Go ahead. This might actually be the Yeah, and again, I haven't I haven't done the research. It's I will totally that's totally on my list, okay. but I'm not. This there. is pure intervals where it's going. Yep. an octave, a fifth, a yep. fourth, a third. Yep, a hundred third. Yeah. So if you've got a trumpet or a trumpet-like thing at your disposal, see what you can play. So I'm going to contrast on, on an actual trumpety trumpet. And I've got this terrible mouthpiece. Let me get a decent mouthpiece. Let's see which one of these do I want to use. I just want to work. They're all, they're all more or less the same, but I get it. at the bottom. I could get the G, but I need valves because I'm a cheater. And then without valves, I get. So what I'm playing on this trumpet is um, is four, five, four, six, and eight. Uh, I don't get the ones in the middle because this trumpet only has four and a half feet of tubing. It's not a, a natural trumpet. And then once I get to eight, oh, I almost get that. That was eight, ten, and twelve. Um, no, eleven. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a half of it. Of this one, but but on this picture, right? On that picture, right? Because I am getting so Robiana is of course correct. He's saying this horn is half as long, your fundamentals an octave higher, of course. Of course. But in terms of relating it to this guy, which was what I was thinking, um, that, that I get those different notes. So now on this, I think I'll be able to play note number three. I can't get note number two. Then I get three. And then four, five, and six. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and eventually you get to where you can play all of those notes. I'm off by a tone somewhere because that's eight. That's as high as you need to play. Any, you've never seen any period. 
um, which is good because I don't have the lips to do the Baroque stuff because I can get. <laughs> Yeah, I never get that. Um, but the old people go way high. It's, it's like now part of it is their 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 the horn and the mouthpiece are are suited for it. Uh, but I've never held a proper baroque trumpet, so I don't know uh, if I could play in that register or not. Um, so so those are what I can play, and then you can play as high as your lips let you go. Um, and then in period, what should I play? And the the, the short answer is play what you have fun with, right? But um, but what we would see is that if I was doing uh, calls of war, I'm usually going to be on notes um, three, four, five, and six. So I've got a sheet of calls of war uh, on the Zoom. If you go to the short flourishes for solo trumpet, He disappeared. <laughs> Trying to make these nice and big, because you know a lot of us are in the same demographic where we can't see any of that yet. Glasses. <laughs> So um, I'd like to start maybe with number four or number five. These are ones that, that aren't doing a whole lot. You can see they're using uh, number uh, two. Number four is using that, that C, B, G, and, and then it goes down to the lower G. So that that's the range that most of the military calls well into the Renaissance were. So just for fun, um, let's look at, uh, actually, what's a good one? Actually, um, let's look at number three, La Charge. Now, I'm not familiar. Oh, I am familiar with Mersenne. Um, uh, but, but out of this, a couple of the famous ones, there was, there was Magnus Thompson um, and uh, Benedelli. Uh, were, were trumpet masters that I spelled his name wrong in my presentation. I totally had Benedetti. Whoops. Um, but they actually, both of them, wrote trumpet manuals independently in 1604. And those were the first recorded, you know, manuals of how to play trumpet. Um, so, but let's look at number four from Thompson. And now this was for solo trumpet. And the tradition was these were in, in meter, but not religiously so. So it wasn't like uh, you could you could adjust that a little bit. You didn't now if we were playing together totally, we'd we'd have to do that. So can we play the ba 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 just one note at a time? Get those in your brain. Oh, now now I get that C in my brain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's the one. Uh, and then, so so that one would be if I was going to count it in in uh, quarter notes. One, two. Uh -huh. <coughs> would probably be played faster than but but this is you don't need a whole a few notes gets you a lot of what was done in period. Now how many people have, um, oh, I'm sorry, I was freaking out because my my clock is still in Eastern time. Oh. Well, I was supposed to be done, but no, I've got 17 minutes and I'm going to use most of it. Um, how many people have heard the trumpeters on the battlefield at Pennsylvania? 
So a lot of people, when you say, you know, Harold trumpeting, they're thinking. They're thinking these high notes, and and really it wasn't. The, the battlefield company was large and these lower notes. Um, so it's really accessible to anybody that that plays trumpet a little bit. You could get a, a horn and play a lot of these. So just for fun, that first one. So, you know, a lot of that is people get scared by the fact, oh, I used to play trumpet and I couldn't play the high notes. And, oh, my gosh. You, you don't need to, to be a, a fantastic solo trumpet player to do any of the period battlefield stuff. All right, now now is where I'm totally going to use the fact that I got a ringer with me because I was a ringer in his wife's class this morning. Um, I, I've included a couple of actual pieces. And I'm going to jump straight to the last one. We'll do this one first um, just because it's I can't stand myself. Let's see. So here's a copy for you. This is a, a sonata um, written by the aforementioned Benedelli um, for the occasion of the arrival of Archduke uh, Carlos to Graz, um, which I believe was 1565. So this is uh, totally a period uh, toward the tail end of our period. And this is a proper uh, trumpet sonata. Let me call this up on the screen so I can speak to it to my online audience. And by the way, for those of you that are online, it makes me smile to see, see you out there. Thank you for joining. There was a request from one of them to hear the serpent that happened during some of the hiccups. Okay, there should be a little time. I, that we probably won't play for another 15 minutes solid. Um, we won't. <laughs> That's one of the things when you're doing brass, you always have to be mindful. Um, but notice there's five parts here. Two of them are jumped down the one line together. Um, so somebody on a trumpet was expected to have a trumpet kitted with the right mouthpiece and the right training to play that fundamental note number two, the one that 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 that, that I was able to play. And they they would play in drone with somebody playing note number three on the G, and they would start first. And end last. This was the way. Um, yeah, it's not an accident. This. So here you go. Bum 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 bum. Um, then, up until you know the the early to mid fifteenth century, you would have two other parts. You'd have the principal part. This is the part that's playing in the bugle call range of what you're used to hearing. So it would go potentially up to the C, partial eight. Um, and then the altar bass would, would play uh, a third or a fifth below that, depending on, on where it was. And and sometimes they were like this, where they're largely slayed together. They're, they don't stray a whole lot. And sometimes there would be a little variation between those parts. Um, and then toward the end of period, we would add uh, a clarino line on top of that, playing in those, in those higher range notes. Um, So what I was going to hope I could browbeat um, uh, Robion into trying, would you feel more comfortable with that second line that doesn't go to that bottom note or with the lower note, that the lower line that, that focuses more on the lower notes? Okay. So why don't you do that? I'll start on that lower line with you, and then I'll jump to the clarino when we get to it. And if we get past measure 10, we could just have a happy dance and, and call it all good. Yes, so you see that lower line you mean the altar bass? Yeah, the altar bass. Yo, no, not the, not the, although if somebody wants to play G, you just go, uh, uh, that'd be awesome. Well, wait, is that somebody on? Okay. So I'll tell you what, let's, let's play that first note. And then on the, your note, it'd be. Ready? So that second line is. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you if you feel more comfortable on that one, play it. Okay. So I think we should Okay, I'm going to try to do that with you at the beginning, and then at the end of that phrase, I'm going to jump to the to the clarion line just to see um, what if I could play it, but uh, if, if it fits together. Okay, one, two, one. No, I, I got the wrong note. I'm sorry. Let's see. Figure out what those guys are. C, right? Okay. Can we start right at that pickup to six? Okay. One, two, one. So you can see how that changes the the flavor of the bugling with oh somebody's trying to play a tune on top of that. Um so um, and then by the time you get to say 1750, you've got the full on and Baroque experience of these people going nuts. Oh, oh, oh. All right, now he's still itching to play something. Oh, oh, oh. Just to give you a contrast, I'm going to try to play that same thing on this is more like a brass horn. This is the, the slide trumpet in D that I've got. So can you play, um, let's get that first note so that I'm in the same key with you. <laughs> Yeah. So you'll you'll see the difference in timber. Um, it's not as much as you might think. So here you ready? One, two, one. <laughs> Thank you for being such a good <laughs> So one thing I do want to mention is um and I didn't I don't believe I didn't bring this out at all. Uh, this is a modern made natural trumpet um, taught for teaching brass. The idea is to get rid of all the buttons and everything and just focus on the tone. It's made for by a company called Brass for Beginners. So if you search Brass for Beginners Natural Trumpet, you'll find this. <laughs> So you can see it plays quite, it's a modern exponential bell with a modern, but it, it plays kind of the natural trumpet, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, music. So, so that's something if you're interested, you could look into. And thank you guys for your time. There was a request to see the serpent. Let me go and find that. And then I will get out of people's hair. So let's see, I'm still not sharing, right? So where did the serpent go? Here's the serpent. So the serpent, here it is. It's about the same magic nine feet of tubing, plays in C. Um, it actually plays its fundamental note 
which is a little lower than what you normally play on a trombone. And you can play mostly chromatically up from there. Um, and you can play the GR. Um, so these were developed in the late 1500s, almost 1600, for use supporting men's voices in church, um, which they do a decent job of because I've done this. Um, and then later the British discovered them as being much cheaper to make than brass horns. Um, and use them in marching bands until the 1800s. Has anybody ever heard of the Offaclyde? The Offaclyde is literally German for keyed serpent. The Offaclyde looks like a giant saxophone that uses a trombone mouthpiece and has these giant saxophone pads. And then the Offaclyde was obsoleted by the sousaphone and stuff. So, so this guy makes it pretty modern, you know, compared to everything else we do. Anyway, thanks for your time. Um, and if you have questions, um, we've got a second or two in the chat. And, and one more time, thank you. Thank and you very much. Let's start getting this stuff out of the way.